So I've been a freelance software engineer for about eight years now. And so far I have made a total of $1,215,800 just in freelancing. I started off doing freelancing like nights and weekends, and then I went full time maybe three years ago. Today, I want to talk about Devon AI, which has really kind of been blowing up the internet for the past week or so. And I've actually spent uh, my entire last week uh, talking about how kind of lame it is, how Devon is like, uh, it's not great. People are really saying it's going to replace everything. And I just don't think it's that great. But today I want to change my approach and just kind of daydream a little bit about like what could happen with Devon AI and what cool things can come out of Devon AI with these autonomous AI agents. So me personally, it took about like seven and a half years to cross the $1 million mark. But I'm thinking that in the future, when uh, these autonomous AI agents or Devon or whatever it may be in the future, when these become more mature, I guarantee that with this technology that I could cross the million dollar mark in a much faster time, maybe two years or less. That's my guess if everything goes smoothly. Basically, I, I just have two goals today. One of which is for freelance software engineers or aspiring freelancers to understand what I think about when it comes to a new project, what kind of topics that I always wanna to try to hit and improve for my clients, but more often than not, don't have enough time for. I wanna have those kind of topics. And then I kind of want to overlay it on the same idea of like, what are realistic applications for Devon AI 2.0, 3.0, or whatever autonomous AI agent we have in the future, like realistic situations where it would be a huge boost for companies and engineers to be able to use them in the future. So before we like dive into it, I want to make some like huge, huge caveats to like what these ideas and this daydream could really be is that sometime this has to be like cost effective. Once the VC money runs out, I want to I want to make sure that, that these tools are still like it makes sense to have a subscription for them and that uh, using them for everyday purposes isn't going to cost me like a thousand dollars a month. Even if it does, I need to make sure I have that ROI in mind. And the second caveat is that we have to make sure that the market kind of adopts that. Like a lot of companies are going to freak out when you say that you're going to run an, a random AI agent on their code base or their business. Like not everyone's going to buy in right away. But when they do, that's when cool things could happen or bad things. But for today, we're talking about cool things. And also the huge last caveat is that Devin AI, Kevin AI, Jordan AI turns into something that is actually good. That like right now, those that marketing video, it's OK. Print state debugging. Cool. I wasn't all that impressed, but if someday it gets better and it becomes more autonomous and something that you could really bounce ideas off of. Like if it gets good in the future, that's another caveat. We don't we, we aren't sure that we're going to get there. We just know that we're progressing pretty quickly and I just hope it doesn't plateau. All right. Also, before I dive in, why does this make me so excited and why would I like be so excited about something that could potentially, I don't know, replace me in the future? So first of all, whoever is saying that like this is going to replace software engineers more often than not, those are the people that uh, that don't know how to code or just learning how to code. And there's a lot of like fear, uncertainty, and doubt in that area. The people that have been uh, programming for years and years and working with businesses and creating software, those people are more pragmatic and less scared about the replacement theory. It's more of a tool in a lot of people's eyes who've been doing this for a long time. So that's where I stand is I view this as like a really sweet tool, kind of like just Tony Stark's Jarvis, like I want this tool to be so mature that I can ask any sort of question and it cranks through all the, the monotonous stuff that I normally have to do my day to day. Also, I want to call out that uh, I think a lot of people that don't code or a lot of people don't realize is how much we as software engineers are just drowning in work, absolutely drowning. There's always this constant fight between the business and engineering about like keeping things maintained, making sure everything's up to date and documented and tested and proper new frameworks are spread throughout things like consistency in the code base. Like all those things go by the wayside when the business says, no, I kind of want more features. So every team I've been on has a lot of like half finished projects. No one really has good documentation. No one has like 100% good tests all over the place. Some do, but um, they have to invest a lot of time and effort and have buy-in at the highest levels for them to be able to do that. But even the big companies that have like enormous piles of cash to hire as many engineers as possible 
do not also have the right resources or buy-in to do all of the proper stuff like tech debt and documentation because it kind of comes back to the same problem of people in the business side wanting to build out new features and functionality to essentially like pay for those engineering paychecks. Also, I think a lot of people don't realize how little of my week is actually coding. And a lot of the time it's, it's discussing things about the code or exploring the code and seeing what's possible, what you should do, doing all the stuff that's outside of coding, like reviewing materials, creating architecture documents, making plans and stuff around it. The amount of coding that's actually done is quite small when we think about the bigger picture of like trying to navigate everything. If AI can circumvent and cut that part all the way down like much quicker and I can get answers faster than just diving into the code myself, that would be such a huge win for everyone involved. So my idea of like being able to make a million dollars with Devon AI or these autonomous agents is the idea that like, if you have like a Tony Stark Jarvis Devon thing, that's able to like really feed back all of the things that you need to know about that code base and that business in an instant, that's gonna save so much time for the business, for you. And you should be able to do projects faster, better, provide more quality, more value for the business, and you'll be able to handle more clients because with the help, you'll be able to mentally keep track of more projects. So that being said, here are the seven things that would be absolutely amazing for like an AI autonomous agent to be able to allow me as a freelancer to provide more value for all of my clients. These are all things that I wish I could do for every single client, but guess what? I just don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. They don't have enough money to hire people, but these are all things that would make the systems better. We have to negotiate and cut some corners in some areas. And these are some of the categories. One of the first things I would do, I would love for an AI agent to be able to map out all the data models. Now I know that there's tools out there that can give you a visual representation of what the database looks like just by going off the database schema. But if AI could not only take all that information, but also process all of the application level data objects that combine a lot of those tables, that would be a huge thing to mentally understand how and where all the data is stored and how it's used in the application layer. Number two, I would love to have AI and, and ChatGPT can do this to an extent right now, but have the ability to uh, assess a lot of the complexity in code to be able to grade some of the areas on a bigger scale and see where are good areas to refactor and be able to refactor for my clients to make it run smoother for the next engineer would also be a huge win. Idea number three, I would love to have like an AI agent that's ingesting all of the errors in the error log from all the instrumentation that we have that code is throwing errors in the production system. Most mature engineering teams has like a huge channel of all these errors that are popping up. And if it's a big enough system, there are thousands and thousands and people only address the ones that are the most noisy and the most dangerous. But if we had an AI agent constantly turning through that big stack of data to understand like what are the bad parts of the code that are constantly raising errors and propose some ideas to how to fix them, that would save so much time and effort and also clean up all of that noise from those error channels so that only the really bad things that pop up are the ones that we need to address and we're not drowning in all this extra nonsense. Idea number five, I would love to actually have the AI agent uh, watch me work. And that sounds weird, but it's not. I would love to have it watch what I do throughout the day and be able to log uh, the commands that I'm, I'm running and also keep track of the kind of work that I'm working on and have context about conversations I've had about the business so that I can have a more robust and very thorough work log. And from there, that could be training material to learn more about trends that I'm seeing during the engagement with my client. There are so many times that even despite my best efforts of trying to write everything down in my work log, is that uh, I forget about something. There's a there's a link, there is a environment variable, there's, there's all these other things that was said in passing that I completely missed and did not write in my notes. And then it comes to bite me two or three weeks later that someone mentioned it and uh, I was not able to take action on it. That would save me so much more time and make me so much more efficient to be able to have that information at the ready and have the AI agent be able to respond to the questions I have about it. So idea number six. So if we had like an AI agent that is completely up to date with knowing how the data looks, what the code is doing, it has read through all the code, understands how everything processes and works. 
is to be able to sit in a meeting and talking with the business about what is possible, making plans for this quarter, next quarter, and what kind of ideas that we can do to make the business better. I can immediately ask an AI agent of saying, hey, is this possible? Is this something that exists today? Or what would it, what would it take to actually have to add this feature into the existing functionality? Normally, I would have to leave the meeting, do a bunch of research myself, double check some things, and then come back to a second meeting and be like, no, it's not possible. Let's renegotiate. And then they would propose something else and I'd go through the cycle again. If I can shorten that cycle into only one meeting where they ask what is possible and then I ask the AI myself about like, I'm thinking about this kind of mailer background job or sort of uh, these sort of data migrations, would this be possible in the knowledge that you have with the code and the data? If we can have an educated AI agent respond quickly and knowledgeably about the existing system, that would also save a ton of time and make it so much better to like plan the right work that won't get thrown away and everyone is happy from the very first day. And the last and probably the most important is I would love to have uh, the ability to offer every single one of my clients the idea of a security assessment. Now there are like static code analysis and different uh, security tools to you know check the security of the system. Not a lot of them are that great and uh, they only you know capture some part of the picture. If an AI agent is able to know the data, the code, the architecture, and be able to do its own static code analysis and understanding how everything works, it will have a more nuanced and direct view of security holes that could happen with the system. And giving my clients that kind of report and be like, here's all the things that we found and here are the different ways that I know I can fix these kind of security holes. Today, those cost tens of thousands of dollars and that also requires a bunch of really skilled security people in the industry to do these kind of assessments and they are kind of worth it. But if I could provide that as a single person that just knows a little bit about security, I feel like I'd provide a lot of value for a lot of clients that way. And again, it's something that I wish I could do today, but I just simply don't have the time and it's hard to sell that to a lot of my clients. So those are my seven ideas for like autonomous AI agents and how they could like really make software engineering more bearable and allow us to get more work done. And honestly, if like you could figure out a way to make AI just do one of each of these things, that's probably a million dollar business in itself. So like, there you go, that's a freebie. If you guys wanna go out and build a million dollar business, just let me know because I'd love to use that tool for any of these problems because these are all things that are hard to do and we never have enough time for. And if we can do them, then all of our systems will be better, all of our code bases will be better, and we can provide more value to all of our clients. And also speaking of security, I was going into a little bit of some of the security concerns I have with Devon AI, and that's in this video right here. But again, this is a super interesting topic and we're on this like weird turning phase of the industry. So I would love to hear any sort of thoughts and comments down below. Let me know what you think and go ahead. And uh, also, if you guys want to put a frog emoji down there, just because like whenever I see emojis in the comments, it just makes me happy. And uh, I love to see that kind of engagement. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you around for the next one.